China has slapped more sanctions on U.S. defense giants Lockheed Martin and Raytheon over arms sales to Taiwan. Ever wonder why countries sometimes use economic punishments called sanctions? The recent clash between the U.S. and China is a prime example. After a meeting between U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Chinese officials, China demanded practical action on sanctions, stirring things up. This event, led by a law professor, explores how these U.S. sanctions are affecting China and how China fights back. We'll also look at whether China's ways of fighting back are working. It's like peeking into a game where big countries try to control each other through economic moves. Next Generation Economics brings you the latest economic, financial, and global news from different parts of the world. If you are new here on our channel, enjoy learning about different topics on a global level. We know that you'll find our videos intriguing. In this video, we are going to discuss how China is responding to the US sanctions. Watch this video to the end and find out how China uses blocking laws and other countermeasures. Let's get started. Following a recent meeting between US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and officials in Beijing, China expressed the desire for the US to be more proactive regarding the issue of sanctions. Just a quick reminder of what these sanctions mean. Economic sanctions in foreign policies are like penalties to make a country change its behavior. It can mean stopping trade, money transactions, or aid to get them to do what they want. These penalties can be specific or affect everything. We use them when we need to do something because people at home want us to, but we need more than just talking or using propaganda. At the same time, we don't want to do really strong things like secret actions or going to war. Sanctions make it more expensive for a country to trade and finance itself, but usually it doesn't completely break its economy. Over time, the country might find new places to buy and sell things, but it will cost more. However, it had to sell things at lower prices and spend more on transportation to reach these new markets. Sanctions also make things more expensive for the country that imposes them. They lose money because they can't sell as much, and they will have to spend more to buy things from other places. Now, let's get back to the beginning of the video. The US has imposed these measures on many Chinese individuals and groups over the last few years, making the relationship between the two big economies tense. In May of 2023, the Chinese defense minister Li Shangfu refused to meet the American counterpart because of these sanctions. These economic actions are hurting China, leading to strong words and steps to reduce their impact. As a law professor and an expert on international trade, I study how the US puts sanctions on China and how China tries to fight back. I also look into whether China's countermeasures are effective. Economic sanctions are an important tool in foreign policy to influence and change the behavior of countries. The US imposed sanctions on China for various reasons, like punishing them for human rights issues, spying, and supporting Russia in the Ukraine war. Some sanctions aim to limit China's technological abilities by restricting access to key tech suppliers. For sanctions to work, the country putting them in place needs to have enough economic power to cause harm and force change. In China's case, the sanctions have hurt both producers and consumers in both countries. They have also helped other countries by diverting trade away from Chinese exporters to suppliers from other places. Traditionally, sanctions target entire countries. For instance, since February 2022, the US has put broad sanctions on Russia for invading Ukraine. The US has also imposed many sanctions on Cuba over the last 65 years to try to change its government, but these haven't succeeded. Economic sanctions can be primary or secondary. Primary sanctions mean the US, for example, stops importing any product from the country facing sanctions. It also stops all US companies from doing any business with that country or its entities. In secondary sanctions, the US refuses to do business with any company that has a relationship with the country facing sanctions. In extreme cases, it also prohibits business with a company that has ties to another company linked to the sanctioned country. In recent years, US sanctions against China have become more specific, targeting certain individuals, products, and companies. For example, the Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Assets Control publishes a list of specially designated nationals facing sanctions. Individuals and businesses on this list have their assets blocked, and US citizens can't deal with them. Many Chinese individuals and businesses, including officials in China's Hong Kong Liaison Office and major corporations like China National Electronic Import Export Company, are on this list. The US Commerce Department, specifically its Bureau of Industry, puts restrictions on certain exports to China in October 2022. 
They controlled things like advanced computers and parts for semiconductors because they were worried about China's defense upgrades. In response to these restrictions and the problems they cause for governments and businesses, the European Union, Canada and the UK made blocking statutes. These statutes let individuals or businesses not follow US laws and need them to tell authorities about any US sanctions. China has also taken steps to fight back against US sanctions. In 2020, China's Ministry of Commerce made the unreliable entity list. If someone or a company is on this list, China thinks they are harming its national security or development interests. Punishments like trade and investment restrictions or fines can be imposed on them. So far, two US aerospace and defense companies are on this list. In 2021, China's Ministry of Commerce made the rules on counteracting unjustified extraterrestrial application of foreign legislation and other measures. These rules say that any Chinese citizen, business or organization restricted or prohibited by US sanctions from doing normal business with a third country must tell the Chinese authorities. China also passed the anti-foreign sanctions law in 2021. This law lets China take action like restricting visas or freezing assets when a foreign country adopts what China sees as discriminatory measures against any Chinese citizen or organization. Unfortunately, it's unclear how effective these countermeasures are. There are no available stats to show if they have lessened the impact of US sanctions. The US and China are big players in the economy. Putting sanctions and counter sanctions in place can make it tough for any foreign country or company that wants to do business in both places. It's like asking them to pick sides. Some individuals and companies in both China and the US might decide to keep doing business despite the sanctions, but if they do, they risk getting fined by US authorities. They might also try to work with businesses in other countries or find different ways to protect themselves from the effects of sanctions. Both the US and China probably won't push sanctions too hard to avoid a big trade war. Finding ways to trade with both the US and China is crucial when the country putting sanctions in place, usually the US, has control over certain goods or technology. For example, there's no quick solution for the Chinese telecom giant Huawei when the US blocks it from getting important semiconductors because the US has a monopoly on them. Eventually, China will make its semiconductors, but that will take a few years. Meanwhile, Huawei has seen less revenue and put more money into research and development. Huawei's experience shows why Beijing wants to counter US sanctions. For now, it seems like China is using blocking tactics at home while talking more aggressively on the international stage. China made a law in 2021, the Anti-Foreign Sanctions Law, to fight back when it feels like other countries treat Chinese people or groups unfairly. This law lets China do things like limit visas, control who comes in and out, freeze assets and stop businesses from working. But it's not clear if these actions help against US sanctions because there aren't clear numbers showing their impact. The US and China, being big economic players, play a tricky game with sanctions that make it hard for other countries and businesses dealing with both. Some might keep doing business, risking fines, while others might find other ways to work around the problems. Both the US and China are careful not to make sanctions too harsh, avoiding a big trade war. For businesses trading with both, it gets tough when a country pulling sanctions, usually the US, controls important stuff. Huawei, a Chinese company, faced this issue when the US stopped it from getting key semiconductors. China tries blocking things at home and talking tough internationally, but the struggle to find the best way to counter US sanctions continues, leaving China's current approach as a kind of temporary move in the ongoing economic game. Join the conversation and share your insights. We want to hear your perspective on China's actions in response to American sanctions. Your thoughts matter, so please drop them in the comments below.